Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So today we will be solving the problem N meetings in one room. So before moving on to the problem, if you guys are new to our channel, please, please, please do consider subscribing to our channel. So the problem states that there is one meeting room in a farm. Yes, you have only one room in a farm. And there are N meetings in the form of starting time and finishing time that's given to you. And you need to figure out what is the maximum number of meetings that can be accommodated in that meeting room. A starting time of one chosen meeting cannot be equal to the end time of the other chosen meeting. Let's understand the problem. So if you carefully observe, uh, this is the starting time of six meetings and this is the finishing time of six meetings. So basically, if I perform the first meeting, then I will take the time one to two. Then if I perform the second meeting, I'll take the time three to four. Then I cannot perform the third meeting because it is taking the time zero to six. After that, if I perform the fourth meeting, that takes me the time five to seven. After that, if I perform the fifth meeting, that is taking me the time eight to nine. So basically, I can perform a maximum of four meetings in the order one, two, four, five. And they want you to print the order of meetings that can be performed in a single room. And you, want, you have to maximize the number of meetings that can be performed. So before moving to the next part of the video, I'd like to share some free resources with you. So I'll be leaving the link in the description. You can go to the link and check out all these free classes on different topics like backtracking, segment tree, hashing, dynamic programming, game theory, binary trees and every other topic that you can see over here. You can also find tracks related to beginner, intermediate, advanced and remember these classes are taken by top educators. So these classes are free so please do go check out these free classes because they are really really in an organized way and if at any moment they do ask you for a referral code please do use take you forward to watch all these free classes and it's absolutely free so you can also check out the new batch of an academy that's starting on january 8 that is the conquest 2021 where they will be teaching you all the topics from the beginner level to the advanced level in a duration of 52 weeks so you can pause the video and check out all the topics that they will be teaching week wise over here so just in case after watching the free classes and checking out the syllabus of the batches if you feel like getting a subscription you can check out their subscriptions and if you are willing to enroll you can use the coupon code take you forward where you will be getting an additional 10 percent discount so guys uh, go check it out if you feel like taking it then only take or else you can watch out all the free resources that's available on the internet so in the problem it is clearly stated that you have to print in order of one based indexing like this is considered as the first meeting this is considered as the second meeting and third meeting and so on so it's one based indexing so you will be given n meetings whose starting point is there and n meetings whose finishing point is there and you only have a single room where you have to perform all the meetings so if i want to solve this problem the first approach that strikes my brain is what if I perform as many meetings as I can in that one room and that's only possible if I perform the meetings whose finishing time is early. Like for an example, if a meeting one is having a lesser finishing time, so let's perform it first and then perform the meeting two which has the next lesser finishing time and in doing so I can actually figure out how many meetings can I perform in given one room? So let's understand this by doing a dry run on this example. So make sure what you do is sort the given meetings in order of their finishing times. So you can take a vector of three quantities. One is the finishing time, the other is the starting time, while the other is the position of the meeting. Yes, if it's the first meeting, if it's the second meeting, you need to take care of that. So if I sort it, the first meeting that I will get is 1, 2, 1 because that is having the shortest finishing time. The second meeting that I will get is 3, 4, 3 because that is the second meeting which is having the least finishing time. After that, I will get 0, 6, 2. After that, I am going to get 5, 7, 5. The next step is very important. You can see there are two, eight, nine. Yes, there are two guys whose finishing time are same. 
So if there are two guys whose finishing time are same, make sure you write the first index as first, like the fourth meeting to be the first guy in your sorted order. So it's going to be 8, 9, comma 4. And after that, you're going to write the next one. That's 8, 9, comma 6. It's not mentioned in the question, but when I was solving the problem, I saw that if you do not maintain this order, you will be getting a wrong answer. So please make sure if there are equal finishing times, irrespective of their starting times. Yes, irrespective of their starting times. If they have equal finishing times, just place them in order of their meeting numbers. That's it. So once you have sorted the meetings in order of finishing time, you will get a uh, data structure as like this so what i know is initially the room is empty so the first meeting can take place yes the first meeting can take place and what i know is if the first meeting takes place i can simply print one because the first meeting is taking place and what is the end time of that first meeting the end time of that first meeting is two yes that's very important the end time or i can say the end limit of the meeting that is taking place is 2. So the first meeting has taken place. Now when I go to the next meeting, I see that this meeting is actually starting at 3. And the previous meeting that I took, it ended at time 2. So the next meeting is starting at the time 3, I can actually perform this meeting. So I can say the next meeting that I can perform is the third meeting. Yes, I can perform the third meeting as the next meeting. So the third meeting ends at time 4. So I can say the last meeting that I performed is ending at time 4. Let's move to the next. Now when I move to this meeting, this says that it starts at 0. Now if a meeting starts at 0 and your last meeting is ending at 4, can you perform that meeting? No, because it's starting at 0. So this meeting cannot be performed. So you skip this meeting. At the next time, you see that the next meeting is starting at 5. So your previous meeting was ending at 4. So you can actually perform this meeting. So I can say I can perform the meeting number 5. Since I can perform the meeting number 5, the meeting ends at time 7. So I can say the last meeting that I am performing ends at a time 7. Now the next step what I see is I have a meeting that starts at a time 8. So I know my last meeting was ending at a time 7. So I can actually perform this meeting because it is starting at a time 8 and ending at a time 9 and our previous meeting was ending at a time 7. So I can say that I can perform this meeting because the starting time is 8 which is after the ending time of the previous meeting that we performed. So we can actually perform the meeting number 4. So our last meeting will be ending at the time 9. So we can just write 9. Right after that, we have a meeting which is 8, 9. So it starts at a time 8. So I know that the last meeting that I performed ended at a time 9. So if I'm getting a meeting which starts at a time 8, I obviously cannot perform that meeting. So this meeting cannot be performed and I can skip this meeting. So I can say once I've traversed through all the meetings in their sorted order of finishing times, I will get my maximum number of meetings that can be performed in this one room. And I'll also get the order if I can simply print it while going through or you can simply store it. That's completely your wish. So the thought process was quite simple. The sooner the meeting finishes, the more chances we have of performing much more meetings in that single room. So that was the thought process. So if I talk about the time complexity of this method, it's going to be a bigo of n initially for traversing through the starting time and the finishing time and putting it into a data structure. Next, I'm going to take a bigo of n log n because I'm going to sort this data structure according to their finishing times. After that, I'm going to take another bigo of n to traverse through all these finishing times in their sorted orders to find the maximum number of meetings. So if I approximate it, I can say the time complexity to be near about n log n. And now if I talk about the space complexity, the space complexity will be bigger of n extra 
to store all the starting time and finishing time and the meeting numbers so in order to sort them according to their finishing time so we will be requiring an extra space so this is the time complexity and the space complexity for the most optimal solution now it's time to discuss the c++ as well as the java solution to the given approach so if you look at the java code you'll be given a function max meetings where you'll be provided with the starting time array the ending time array as well as the size of the array so what we do initially is we create a data structure yes we create an array list of meeting yes this is a class which will be having start end and position and we have a constructor which is initializing it so we have a data structure which is going to hold the starting time the finishing time as well as the meeting number so what we do is we iterate over the length of the array and what we do is we add it to the data structure yes we add the starting time as well as the ending time as well as the meeting number remember you add the meeting number as one based indexing so once you have done this what we do is we create a object of the comparator to be used so if you are familiar with java you know how to write a comparator right basically you define a class uh, which implements the comparator and over here will be your data type so our data type is the class meeting so right inside that you write the compare function which is ultimately your comparator so basically what i do is i do a sorting of that data structure meet and using the comparator object that i created so what i am doing is i'm basically making sure if the ending time is lesser than that then i'm returning a minus 1 so that it stays as it is if the ending time is greater i'm returning a 1 so that they are reversed i hope you know how to write a comparator and if both of these conditions are not satisfied that means they're equal the finishing time is equal and you know whenever the finishing time is equal you're going to check for the position yes you're going to check for the meeting number if the meeting number is smaller than the other meeting number you return a minus 1 or else you return a 1 so this is the simple comparator that you write so this is going to sort your data structure according to your finishing time and if the finishing time are equal it's going to sort it according to the meeting number so once you have done that what we do is we declare an array list of integers which is going to store the meeting order yes the order which we get in our answer it's we are using a data structure to store it you can also directly print it but just we are using the data structure so that the code looks much cleaner so we know initially the first meeting will be performed so i add the first meeting number into our answer and i know if the first meeting is performed so the ending time will be the limit of that meeting yes right after that i start iterating from the first meeting to the last meeting and i check if the starting time yes if the starting time is greater than the previous meeting that i performed that's ending time if it is greater i can perform that meeting and if i can perform that meeting i simply add it to my answer and if i can perform that meeting that means i am performing a new meeting that means the end time will be updated so i update our end time or i can say i update my limit to the end time of the new meeting that i'm performing once i have performed all the meetings i know i will have my meeting order stored in our answer so i can simply print the answer array and i will get my meeting in the order in which they are going to be performed so this is about the java solution it's accepted at the gfg so guys it's time to talk about the c++ solution so basically you'll be given a void uh, function max meetings where you'll be given the starting array you'll be given the ending array also you'll be given the length of the array so initially what we do is we create a struct meeting which is going to hold start end and your meeting number that is position of the meeting and what we do is we define a, a data structure or an array of size n which is going to hold start end position together and what i do is i take start end and the meeting number and i put it into that data structure 
So apparently our data structure is having the start, finish and the meeting number together for all the end meetings. Once we have done that, I know I have to sort that data structure such that the shorter finishing time appears first and if they, there are equal finishing times, then the guy with the lesser index appears first. So I write a comparator, right? So guys, if you don't know how to write a comparator, I've already taught it in the C++ STL video. So pause this video, go check it out and then you can come back. So what I do is I have this struct meeting M1 and M2. So I basically check if the finishing time is lesser. So I return it true. If the finishing time is greater, that means the pairs has to be swapped. So I return a false. And if these two conditions are not true, that means the finishing time is equal. And if the finishing time is equal, I know I have to sort them according to their position or meeting numbers. So I basically check if their position is lesser than the other position. Then I return a true. And if it is not, I return a false. Just in case if the meeting number is greater. So once I've sorted that, I declare a data structure answer, which is gonna store my answers for the meeting order. Right after that, I know the first meeting is gonna be performed. Yes, while the data structure is sorted, the first meeting in meet of zero, yes, meet of zero, is going to be our first meeting that's gonna take place in our room. So I take that meeting number and add it to my answer. And I know if I'm performing that meeting, the ending time will be the limit will be the limit yes so that for the next meeting when i check i know what is the ending time so uh, right after that i start checking from the first index and what i check is if the starting time of the new meeting is greater than the finishing time of the previous meeting that i performed in that room yes in that case i know this meeting can be performed and i add the meeting number to our answer and I also update our limit that is the ending time of the of the meeting that we are performing in the meeting room so I just update limit so for the next instance whenever I perform a new meeting I have a new limit and I can check so once I have performed for all the indexes I know our meeting order will be stored in this answer vector and right after that I can print this answer vector to get my answer so guys, this was about the C++ code and yes, this is accepted at GFG. So guys, I hope you understood the thought process, the explanation and the code. So just in case you did, please, please, please make sure you like this video as well as if you are new to our channel, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. With this, I'll be wrapping up this video. Let's meet in some other video where we will be discussing some other problem from the SD sheet.